Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In this video we're going to be talking about the relationships between pressure, volume and temperature when we're thinking about samples of gases. Okay, so we're going to go through pressure versus volume first, pressure versus N, which is refers to the number of particles, and then pressure versus temperature for a gas. Okay? So by now that you would have um, done the activity where you've taken some secondhand data and produced a graph Okay, and so here's where we're going to actually dig into and, and analyze that a little further. Okay, so let's start with the first one, pressure versus volume. All right, so let's let's have a look at a kind of a general set of axes. I'm not going to draw this as points. I'm just going to draw a um, a simple, um, yeah, just just going to kind of a really sort of simple sort of curve over here. Okay, so we have pressure on the y-axis and volume on the x-axis. Okay, so for each scenario, we're going to maintain the pressure being on the y-axis here. Okay, so we saw that as we took the sample and then as the volume increased, the pressure decreased. Okay, so in mathematical terms, we call this type of curve a hyperbola. Okay, and so so what we're seeing so is so as um, as pressure um, Let's look at it this way. As volume increases, pressure decreases. Okay, it would be very easy for then as... To, let, let's look at it in the reverse. Okay, so as we get smaller and smaller, if we take that sample of gas and we decrease its volume further and further and further, we, we see that, that pressure spikes incredibly. Okay, so that is... Um, we, we so the volume can never get to zero. We can never think of a, 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 a an exact zero volume, but as you would, the pressure would get larger and larger until we get to you know some value of, of infinite pressure, which we obviously we can't get to. But that is if you could keep compressing it down, that then we, we'd get to that sort of stage. So mathematically, we we look at this idea. We say that pressure is proportional to that's what this symbol represents one over volume. So we would say these two things are inversely proportional. Okay, now we'll look at the explanation for that in a sec. Okay, but so what this, this is mathematically just expressing that as one goes up, the other goes down. You know, so if pressure goes up, volume goes down or vice versa. Okay, all right. So let's, let's have a little look at the why. Okay, so I want you to imagine, so we have boxes of the same, um, with the same number of particles in them, okay, um, that get smaller and smaller, okay, so that is, um, volume is decreasing as we're going this way, okay, and so what we're seeing here is that remember that when we're talking about um, pressure, we're thinking about collisions um, of particles with the container, okay, so, think about it, this logically then, that if we have a smaller container, we get more collisions. Okay, that is, there's more opportunities for those particles to be hitting the sides of the box as the box itself gets smaller. Okay, it's like if you took a room full of people and then you just progressively, you know, made the room smaller and smaller and smaller. They're more likely to bump into each other and they're more likely to hit the walls as well. Okay, because you haven't taken any people out. Okay, so that means by getting more collisions, we get an increase greater pressure. Okay, likewise, if you wanted to look at it in the opposite direction, we're starting with them in a small space and then we're spreading them out further, there's less likely to hit the walls on their way. Okay, which means that the pressure decreases. Okay, let's have a look at this now um, in terms of um, whoop, pressure versus number of particles. Pressure versus n number of particles. Okay, so we'll set up our, our set of axes like this. Okay, and so what you would have seen is that we would get a line that looks like this. Okay, maybe I'll just keep it keep it restrained there. Okay, so looking at our axes, so that is as pressure increased. No, okay, so. As n increased, the pressure increased. 
okay? So that is, as we, as we are increasing the number of particles, that is, we get more particles, leads to more pressure. Okay, which is fairly intuitive for us to understand, because if we have three boxes of the same volume, the same size, you know, and so we've got three particles in here, and we've got um, six particles in here, and we've got nine particles in here, okay, we've got three, six, and nine, okay, we can see that we're going to get more and more collisions of particles with the box as we add more particles into the same size. Okay, If we had a, a given room, you had three people in it, and then all of a sudden you doubled it to six people, and you tripled it to, to nine people, you get more chances that they're going to bump into um, the walls. So we would say that pressure is directly proportional, is so directly proportional to the number of particles. Okay, so that means that, you know, if you double the pressure, um, well, if, if you double the number of particles, you would double the pressure. Okay, so it's a direct relationship. Okay, um, so that we're seeing that sort of thing here. If you triple the number of particles, you triple the pressure. If you halve the number of particles, you halve the pressure. Eventually, if you get to a point in which you have zero particles, you should also have zero pressure because there's no collisions between the particles and the container. Okay, now let's have a look at the last relationship here. Okay, let, I'll keep, see if I can keep my axes a little more restrained this time, rather than rewriting everything for the sake of it. Okay, so this is what we have. Um, so looked at a value of, of pressure and versus temperature in Celsius. Okay, now here's the way you notice something interesting. Okay. So as the print, as you started with the temperature at a certain value, and then as you decreased it, you eventually got to the, to this point at zero Celsius, where our pressure was up here. Okay, so as um, temperature increased, um, the pressure increased. Okay, so that is you could also then look at it in terms of decreased and then decreased, okay? That is, as you cool it down, the pressure gets less, okay? Now, we're going to talk about the shape of this graph in a second, the fact that it doesn't come down to here in a moment, okay? Because it, it, well, the, we can see that there's a logic to this, okay? But so let's, again, look at it in terms of boxes of the same size. We've got the same number of particles. Let's go with four in a box this time. Okay, so, and let's imagine that we're increasing from uh, our temperature from left to right. Okay, so we kind of did these little, little sort of lines to represent particle motion in the past. Okay, and so now what we can see is that we're trying to visualize that as we're increasing the temperature, that is more thermal energy so as we're increasing the temperature, remember temperature is a measure of how much thermal energy is in the sample. Okay, so more thermal energy equals more motion, that is to say more kinetic energy. Okay, this leads to more collisions with the container, which therefore increases the pressure. Okay, so we're seeing, so what I'm trying to represent in the diagram here with a little, little kind of little trailing lines behind is kind of the, the motion here. So as we're representing, we've got more motion, which means more collisions, more more force as those particles hit the sides of the container as the temperature goes up. But now we notice something curious, don't we? That as we go down, we get to zero Celsius, but we still have a pressure. We're still getting a force of particles with the sides of the container. A very curious thing for us to see, okay? Which I'll have to wait till the next video to find out. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now. P.S. Can't forget our chemistry joke, can we? All right, here goes. What did one on an ion say to the other? I've got my eye on you. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.